Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Well, I'm going to call this one Mystery Wood. I went out to my wood pile thinking that I was going to grab a piece of fur. I've never turned fur before, and pr mostly what provides the shade here at Shady Acres is hundreds of uh, 150, 200 foot tall fir trees. So we've got plenty of them. And I've got plenty of firewood on the pile. And that's what I thought I was grabbing. This didn't have, this had just a little bit of bark, not much right over here and I peeled it off. Uh, to tell you the truth, I wasn't even paying attention. It's just, I had set aside two or three pieces of fur and this is the pile I set them in. And I just grabbed one. I didn't really pay attention at all. It was a full round. But I went ahead and took it to the bandsaw and cut it, cut it in half, cut the pith out. So this is what's remaining on, on the one side. The other side's mostly rotten and cracked, so uh, I went with this one. This is 12 inches. So it was a 12 inch diameter tree, 12 inches this way, and it's 10 inches this way. And typically I would turn a... Uh, a natural edge bowl, that's what I intended to do. But then there's some rot up here. You can't see it, it's on the flat side, top side, bowl side, and here as well. So I thought I'd end up cutting that away. So I went ahead and marked out my center, drilled a hole for my woodworm screw, mounted up on the woodworm screw, and son of a gun, that went in very soft. So I don't think I don't think the woodworm screw is going to hold it, but that's okay. All I need to do is make a tenon on this side so that I can flip it around. So I'm just going to work the outside first as normal with my 5 8 bowl gouge. So I don't I don't know what kind of wood this is. It's a very light color. Kind of looks like that wood that I called junk wood in a couple of my videos, but it doesn't exactly look like that. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's alder. So we're just both going to be surprised together. And I've set my lathe speed at about 650 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I'll get my mask and face shield on and we'll get to turning. Hang with me. Definitely not fur, and it does look like alder now that I'm getting into it. Alder is usually a harder wood. And it is turning kind of hard, but I don't know why it was so soft when my woodworm screw went in there. Just trying to get a large enough area for my tenon. Not quite there. Close. I got a ways to go here, don't I? Yeah, that's all there. Well, 
not gone yet. Oh boy, got a pretty big split here. This is kind of punky wood, bug eating, I guess. I might have to hit that with some CA. I guess I better do that before that whole quarter of the bowl goes flying off. I'll be back. I'm using quite a bit of this and if you've never done that you may be able to see some of the smoke coming off of there and the fumes are obnoxious so you want to be, kind of be careful not to get in too close you see that smoke I don't really know what causes that drying process, I guess. I know it's extremely flammable, but that goes in there quite a little ways. I've got a rag down here because I don't like glue getting on my lathe bed if I can avoid it. Stand back and let it breathe. Whew. I'm a little afraid of that. That's a pretty big crack. This is some of that punky wood I was telling you about. Wow. That smells. Burns your eyes too. Just don't want to get too close. I hope this doesn't end up being a wasted piece. I really like alder. I like turning it and I like the looks of it, but this piece might just be too far gone. Okay, I'll be back when that uh, sets up doesn't catch fire. As you can see this is pretty rotten or punky wood up here uh, so I did fill it with CA. I've got more over here that I didn't touch. I'm thinking I want to come in and take most of that away. I did not set out to make a square bowl. I kind of like the looks of it so far but I, I don't think that's I don't think that's possible. Maybe. We'll see how it goes. I still have some work to do down here for my base. So I've got to come in here further, try and get rid of most of this. It's good everywhere but there. And that doesn't even bother me so much. I wouldn't mind missing a little bit of the base here, but uh, that might be a bit much. So I'm going to take away more of this try and get down to at least in the middle of this somewhere for a base. I don't know, that's a pretty big crack. I did let the CA dry for about uh, 20 minutes, I guess. And it is dry now. But that crack comes up to about here. And then that's where it gets pretty punky and it's hard to tell what's going on there. And it comes not all the way to here, but almost. So it's possible this whole piece is going to go flying off of here. I don't know. Just don't know. But we're going to find out. Yeah, I can live with that. Change to a swept back ground so I can bring this back down to two inches or so. Well, let's 
check that diameter. Now I've got a ways to go. Trying to create the dovetail here. I think we're good. Go back to work on the profile. going to be more or less a uh, natural edge with all this natural part still there. Definitely not what I had in mind. Sometimes that happens. I got to see if I can clean this up just a smidgen better. I think I'm going to rely on a scraper to finish that up. I just can't quite get it every time I come around and hit one of these. The gouge bounces a little bit and I just can't get a smooth cut. So I'm going to go to my round nose scraper. Not bad, not good, not bad. Okay, time for sanding after I do a little cleanup. Before I start finish sanding the bottom here, I want to spend a little time on the uh, edges, the four edges. Um, right here, I'm not sure that that shows up on camera, but there's a, a raised area here. Comes all the way over here. It's just from the chainsaw cut that was made. This is an irregular shape. It actually slopes down towards the bottom at an angle like that. This is kind of flat across but it is rough. Uh, th that one's kind of flat across and it has this little natural area here. I want to leave that. But what I want to do before I start sanding up this area is uh, work on these edges. And my wife just happened to have gotten me a cordless belt sander for Christmas and I haven't had a chance to use it yet. So that's what I'm going to use to do this. So that's next. Well, that worked pretty slick. Maybe I will use that on all the edges. Yeah, that's all I want to do is just kind of smooth it out. I don't want to alter it from what it is. Still rugged but a little smoother, a little more finished. 
always considering the the nature of the piece. So I'll get set up to finish sand. Now normally I would remove the tailstock so that I could have a little better access at this. But again, I don't trust that wood worm screw. It went in just a little bit too easy. I think the wood up there is kind of soft. So that's why I'm leaving the tailstock in place. And yes, it is in my way and it's driving me nuts. Try this in reverse. So I will go through, this is 80 grit. I'll go through 80 all the way through 400. And I'll be back. I won't make you sit through all that. You're welcome. I've been at this for about an hour, maybe a little longer. And I just wanted to show you my process. Uh, I'm alternating, sanding in reverse, sanding forward. In reverse, I'm holding my drill this way so that the upcoming corners hit towards the middle instead of catching like that. And I'm also changing the direction of the, the drill when it's going backwards. I want to be sanding down like that. And when it's coming forward, change the direction of the drill. And I want to be sanding up over here. And then every once in a while I'll stop and see if there's a swirl or something that I, I don't want there. And then I'll, I'll just hand sand it or stationary sand it. And I'm up to 220, still going to 400, so I've got. Uh, after 220, I've got 320 and then 400. And then we will reverse this thing. But it's coming along pretty good. So I'll get back to you. So this is what my edges look like. This one's kind of missing the corner here. That one's really chewed up. I've filled this with CA as well as here. This is filled with CA and it's pretty hard. And then this, this edge is beveled naturally, untouched by me. And then this one has these really cool divots in there. Those are natural. And there's some saw cuts still visible here. However, this is smooth. I've smoothed it out. And that's just the way I like to do things when I'm doing a kind of a natural piece. This isn't anywhere near as natural as I usually do. But I like as much naturalness as I can get like I always say, it's not necessarily what I do to a piece, it's what I don't do to a piece. And it, to me, this just adds charm and interest, and that's just what I like. So now, typically at this point, after it's all sanded like it is, I would put a finish on, but because I'm not sure if I'm going to rework these corners and bring this it more thinner. 
I don't know if I'm going to do that or not because I don't know how far I'm going to come in from the top. You still can't quite see the top, but it's pretty rotten right here. And it's rotten right here. You'll see that when I flip it around, which we're going to do now. Now remember, I've left the tailstock support up here because I have no confidence in that woodworm screw that it's sitting on. So we'll lock the, lock the spindle and screw this off of here. It just doesn't take any effort. And I don't feel like I can trust that woodworm screw to take off the little nub that's left on the uh, that's left on the tenon right there. But I think that will fit inside the chuck. I don't think I have to take that off. If I do, I'll just cut it off before I put it in the chuck. But we'll get that woodworm screw out of there and see how this is going to fit. Bigger than I thought it was. Okay, now I, I like to bring up the tailstock to press pressure against the center of what is now the top where the bowl is. So I'm bringing my tailstock up here and I'm applying pressure to push that into the chuck as far as I can get it, nice and tight. And then I'll tighten up the chuck jaws. So this is some of the rot and bug holes I'm talking about. And there's a crack right here goes all the way to the center. And then this is real bad. That's bug holes and punkiness. So I just don't know how far I'm going to have to take this down to, to find sound material. I'm probably going to leave the, a square rim up here. Well, not probably, I am. So the bowl part will be right in that area, I guess. That's about as big as I can go. Over here, it's quite large, because this is our 12 inch direction. And over here, it's closer, because that's our 10 inch direction. So actually, it looks like a lot of this will stay. So I can't wait to start cutting into that, but that's, I, I can't wait, but I'm going to. It's kind of late in the afternoon. I'm tired. That sanding just takes a lot out of you, or a lot out of me anyway. But I am looking forward to it, but I'm going to save it for in the morning. So we'll see you back here. Don't go anywhere. So I've, I've got a pretty good crack going through here and I filled it with CA and it also ran down this way and it comes over here almost halfway through the piece and the same over here so I'm hoping it, there's no wiggle to it but I'm hoping that sticks with us so I'll get my mask and face shield on and uh, grab my freshly sharpened 5 8 inch bowl gouge and get to it Turning at about 780 RPM. Yeah, I'm going to have to get rid of my tailstock support. Now usually when you're making a ball, you can sight down the side and uh, follow it on the inside follow the outside on the inside but I, with this big rim around here I can't really see the outside 
so I'm going to have to stop and check often, I guess. Also, before I remove much more, I need to determine what I'm going to do outside on the top of this. If I'm just going to leave it alone or if I'm going to take it down some. And I think I'm going to take it down some. Kind of heavy looking. Yeah, I think that's the right move. How far to go? How far to go? It's just a matter of taste. I do want the piece to look substantial. I don't want it to look heavy. And I don't want to lose all of these natural defects. But I don't mind losing some. So I'm going to just keep going here a little bit. Definitely looking better. Getting into my edge defect over here, maybe more than I want to, I'm not sure. It, you know, it's just hard to know. This is holding up pretty well. I think I'll go back to work on the ball. <clears throat> Actually, I think I'll go sharpen up. Well, we're getting rid of a lot of the rot. Getting on the firm ground there, that's a good thing. I'm watching my cracks. Yep, coming along. Still got a lot of thickness here. I'm probably about out as far as I want to go, so I'm going to have to start going down the side real straighter. Getting some nice curvies off of there. Sides are getting thinner. I haven't gone through a bottom in a couple of years and I just as soon keep it that way so I'm going to measure. I don't think I'm anywhere near close but I don't know how it goes. Well I'm closer than I thought. I'm about uh, 5 eighths of an inch at the bottom. On the side here I'm about 3 quarters. Now there is that crack on the outside that matches this crack here on the inside. And I have filled it with CA. But I don't want to get to... I don't want to see through it. But I still have to get thinner. You know, I'm going to go sharpen up. I use... Uh, Almost exclusively Benjamin's Best from uh, Penn State Industries. I bought just about every chisel they make. Uh, 
several years ago before I retired in anticipation of being a turner one day. And now I'm a turner and I've learned a lot using these and they work pretty well and I, I don't have any real complaints but I do have to sharpen pretty often. But I might have to start upgrading, get a little harder steel. This is M2. I'm not sure what's out there, but I know, I know there's harder steels out there. And it isn't that it isn't sharp, it is pretty dang sharp. But I know I can get it sharper, so hold on. Sounds a little hollow, doesn't it? What are we hitting? I'm guessing it's this crack right here. And I can't really tell. I don't see any other major cracks while well, this one. I don't want this thing flying apart on me now. I'm getting to like it. We're just about there, boys and girls. I'm getting nervous about that crack. It's thicker than I would like it to be. Well, it's about right, right here. This is a little thicker, I guess, so. I'll take another pass about halfway down. Yep, that got it. I think I'm gonna stop. That crack is just making me nervous. I don't know if I can see the light through there. Yeah, I can. I can see light right here. I'm gonna take a couple passes with a bowl, uh, bowl scraper and sand it. Got a nice burr on there. Yeah, we're going with that. Time for sanding. I don't know quite what I'm going to do with this top edge as far as sanding goes. I might just use a finishing sander on there, I don't know. I'll figure it out and get back to you. So I'm just applying the first of uh, at least two coats of sanding sealer. Got this all sanded up through 400 grit. 
and I'm using my paintbrush here to force this into the bug holes and the cracks and some of the natural defects in this piece. I don't know if I love this one. Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell when they're horizontal on the lathe and you kind of need to set it on the table and see what it looks like so I'm anxious to do that but it's going to take a while to get a couple coats on here it's pretty chilly out so it takes a while to dry anyway what, once that's all done I will come back and show you what it looks like this is just, some areas of this is just really soaking it up. But the sanding sealer serves more than one purpose, and for me, one of those purposes is it uh, kind of solidifies the punky areas, the rotten areas, and this does have some of those still. So I'll get this done, and we'll meet back here, okay? Well, I am done with the finish on this piece. It's got three coats of uh, sanding sealer and two coats of shellac. And it seems no matter what I do and how much I do it, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Certainly the finish is on there, but it's just not building or maybe building isn't the right word I don't know I think because this piece is set out in my uh, firewood pile for so many years maybe 30 that uh, I don't I don't know maybe the molecular structure of the wood has changed or something I cannot get a really smooth finish on here it, it's smooth but it isn't silky smooth it isn't glass smooth it's got a texture to it and that's not something I've run into uh, with alder before or really anything else that I've put the uh, shellac on it always builds nicely it always leaves a nice feel and this is kind of a nice feel if you don't mind a little texture uh, it feels like really really fine sandpaper I just don't know what the problem is but uh, because of the weather I've been working on this piece for a week. You wouldn't know that watching the video, but I've been working on it for a week, which means come out here and put a coat on and wait a day and sand it off the next day and uh, put another coat on and wait a day like that. So that's what I've been doing. And I got to move along. I got to come up with my next turning. I got to get this video loaded up. So I'm done with it. I'm just going to call it a rustic, a rustic bowl. It'll work as a bowl, you know, maybe a fruit bowl or something, I don't know. It's pretty good size, 12 inches from here to here, 10 inches from here to here, uh, maybe 3 inches deep, 3 and a half inches on the outside, something like that. So I'm done. So I'm going to turn this around and we'll take the tenon off. That's next. So I've mounted this little circle of wood on my uh, woodworm screw in the chuck. And then I'm going to put a piece of non-slip material on there, like I always do. And then bring my bowl up. And you probably can't see it, but I still have my center hole here from turning the outside. So I'll bring the tailstock up for that and advance the ram a little bit. Make sure this feels like it's solid. Yeah, that's good. Okay, a little more pressure. And we'll go with... Uh, a half inch standard grind bowl gouge to remove that.
And then I gotta go down further. Still too high. Still too high. Right in the middle. It's okay out here at the edge, but right in the middle it's too high. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to use a swept back bowl gouge, get in there a little tighter. Also do a little bit of uh, shear scraping. One last check. Now that I'm in closer to the center there, yeah, I got good clearance. Now if you've seen me do this before, I, I just use the bevel of the gouge and apply pressure towards the headstock, and that's what holds it on my when I finally separate this tenon. And when I feel like I, I'm getting close, I just put my left hand on the switch. And once that breaks through, I'll just turn it off and the gouge will be holding it. Like that. We are through. So I've just got a little tiny bit here to sand up. Of course, i got to sand up this hole. About two and a half inch diameter. But I will do that. Off the lathe. So I've just put down a non-slip pad to protect the finished part of the, the top side of the bowl. And now I'm just going to sand this off. So there's the finished bottom, nice and smooth, all signed and ready to go. And here's the whole bowl. Now I'm aware that typically you wouldn't have this in a, in a nice bowl, a nicely turned bowl. You'd have this, this same thickness all the way across here. But in this case, I kind of like the charm, I guess, if you will. Kind of a hand-hewn look to it rather than a finely turned bowl. So I went ahead and left it this way. I wouldn't do that on a real nice piece of wood. This has lots of natural defects in it. Lots of uh, bug activity here. So well, that's it. I'm not in love with it. I'm really glad it's done. And I can't wait till the next piece. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, please. If you're not a subscriber, I'd appreciate it if you would become one. And we'll see what's next. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.